Well, today I want to uh, take a few minutes, probably 10 minutes or so, to cast some vision at the beginning of this message. We're starting a new series today. Actually, we're going to be finishing up the book of Joshua over the next several Sundays. And so I'll be talking to you today, and I'll let you know what that topic is going to be in just a moment. But before we get started, I believe that God has given me a word for the year, for 2022. And I want to speak that in faith over you. I'm going to just read this, okay, because I wrote it. I want to make sure I get it right. Um, I believe the Lord has given me a word for 2022, and the word is promise, promise. Let me just explain that a little bit. I am not a prosperity gospel preacher. You know that. Uh, But I do believe that God blesses you when you give. I believe that God blesses you when you obey. I believe God blesses you when you have faith. There's no denying that from Scripture. But what we're talking about is the promises that we find in Jesus Christ. And that's our word for this year. Uh, Am I going to promise that you're going to have a raise this year? Nope, I am not going to promise that because I don't know that. I hope you get a raise. Um, I hope you get, uh, if you're wanting to start a company, I hope your company just blows the lid off this year. But I can't promise you that. That's not what God promises. Now, God promises to bless, and in his uh, love uh, and in his plan, uh, there are some people that he blesses financially. I I was reading uh, this this week, and and I read it about every week of my life, uh, this verse where Jesus said, uh, if you, talking about earthly fathers, he said, if you then being evil, and he's talking about being sinful, know how to give gifts to your children, how much more will our Heavenly Father give good gifts to those that He loves, His children? Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, Maybe your earthly father, your relationship with your father was not optimal. I know that there are a lot of people that are like that. Some of you were abused. Some of you were abandoned. Some of you are angry. And I realize that not every earthly father is a good father, but we know what a good father is, right? We know what good fathers do. Good fathers want to take care of their kids. Good fathers give things that are good to their children. And if that is the case, our perfect heavenly father, how much more will he give good gifts to those who ask? Now, let let, let me break that down for you. God has the ability to give good gifts. Would you agree with that? The Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Father. So everything good in your life is from God. He has the ability to give good gifts. But you say, well, you know what? Um, I prayed that I would win the lottery, and I didn't. Well, Maybe God knows that that would ruin you and that would be a bad gift for you. You say, wait a minute, what are you talking about? I know this. I know human nature. You know what human nature is? We say, boy, if I won that lottery, here's what I'd do. And here's what I know about human nature. Often, if we come into something like that, we're going to quit everything that's important in our life and go drink Mai Tais down on the beach all the time. And uh, there are some, not all, some, if something like that happened to you, it would be a bad gift. You know why? Because it would ruin your relationship with the Heavenly Father. And you would go, and I'm, I'm just saying, God has the ability to give good gifts. He has the will to give good gifts. Now, let, let me just say this. He has the will to give good gifts. How do we know this? Because the Bible tells us that eventually, Everything is going to be restored to God's original purpose, and it's all good. If you read in Genesis, when God created, you know what he said at the end of each day of creation? He said, and he saw that it was very good. God doesn't do bad things. God is not the author of sin. God is not the author of evil in your life. Good gifts come from the Father. He gives good gifts. He has the will to give good gifts. We know that it is his will, listen closely, for every believer to be healed. Now, some of you, you're just like, uh-oh, you just lost me. 
because I prayed this year that God would uh, let me get better, and I did not. Let, let, me, let me give you scripture on this. Let, let me give you biblical thought on this. I'm not suggesting that every person that does not get healed physically in this past year from the ailments that you have, that you aren't Christian or that you're not in faith or that God doesn't love you. When I say God's will is to heal every believer, eventually he heals us all permanently. Do you know what I'm saying? Because one day you're gonna be in his presence. We know that sin caused death and disease, all right? And so in heaven, there will be no sin and everything will be perfect. You'll never have any more aches and pains. You'll never have any more disease. You'll never get COVID again. You'll never have a cold again. You'll never get the flu again. You're going to be the way God created you to be. He created you to be healthy. He created you, but sin causes these problems. So eventually, that's why I say God's will is to heal every Christian. He will heal us all. Now, does God heal sometimes temporarily? Absolutely. A year ago, I was in a wheelchair. I could not walk. And people literally all across the world begin to pray for me. You know, sometimes God heals like that. We, we read that in the New Testament about Jesus. He had the, but you know that there was one man that he healed, and I take great comfort of this. Uh, there was a blind man that he healed, and you know what he did? He healed him slowly. He touched him, and the first thing he said, so what do you see? He said, well, I see men like trees walking around. In other words, his eyes were not completely healed. And then Jesus touched him again, and he was completely healed. What does that tell us? Well, sometimes God heals temporarily. You know why I say temporarily? Because we're all going to die, right? You do realize that, right? Uh, you realize a dead person is not healthy, right? You, you, you realize a dead person is not healed. And no matter if you live to be 120 years old, I, I, I read about Betty White. She was just a few days short of her 100th birthday. I was pulling for her to get to 100, and she didn't, she didn't make it. And, and look, no matter if you live as long as Betty White did, one day, unless Jesus comes back first, you are going to die, so am I. So that's why I say God heals. He has the will to heal. He has the ability to heal. But sometimes he heals us permanently by taking us home to heaven, and sometimes he heals us temporarily. Because any healing in this world is temporary at best. But I, I, I say this to the glory of God. People all across the world prayed for me, and uh, 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 just even a month or six weeks ago, I could not walk up and down stairs without assistance. I had to hold on, had to like, you know, drag myself up. And uh, God is healing me. A year ago, I was in a wheelchair. Uh, and uh, today you see me walking. But this past week, I probably went upstairs in our house and downstairs at least 40 times unassisted. All right. I helped. My son helped me. We took a king size mattress up to the bedroom. I carried about 250 pounds of weights, not at one time, all right, but several trips, all right? Why am I saying this? Because God heals every believer permanently, eventually, but then he also heals us temporarily. He has the ability to do that. Jesus did it. I'm a walking, living example, and you've heard me say, I thank God that he put me through what he put me through. I really do. I mean that with all my heart. I ended up with peripheral neuropathy and radiculopathy. I know that sounds ridiculous. That sounds like a made-up word. I thought the doctor was teasing me. I'm like, oh, yeah, uh, I've also got ludicrous allergy too, right, you know? But it deals with the radius something. I don't know. Uh, anyway, he explained it to me. I still didn't understand it. But here's what I know. It attacked my nerves and my muscles and my back and legs and Jesus heals. Amen? He heals. Now, we have people in this church that he's healed from cancer. We have people in this church uh, that he's healed from all kinds of different ailments. And why would I say that? Because the promise is in Jesus. He does not promise us that we're not going to have difficulty. You cannot find that in the Word of God. He does not promise that your path will not have obstacles. Doesn't promise that. 
And so I'm not going to stand up here uh, as some charlatan and say, oh, this is going to be the greatest year of your life. I I believe it could be the greatest year of your life. And I do believe that God, I'm trusting by faith that COVID's going to get better and everything's going to get better and that you're going to be better and that you're going to be blessed financially. I'm praying for that for you. I trust that for you, but I am not going to make a promise that the word of God does not promise you. But here's what I know. Jesus promises to be with us. Now, maybe you don't get healed. Maybe you don't get whole financially this year. Maybe there are some disappointments in your life this year. Here's what I know. The promise is not that you won't have obstacles, but that he will be with you every step of the way. And that is what encourages us. That is what gives us life. So anyway, let me, let me read this. We're going to look at the promises of God that he gives us in Scripture. This year I'll be preaching from Joshua, Matthew, the Psalms, and other Scriptures And I speak these words prophetically through Scripture. I believe that God's Word is powerful, alive, inerrant, inspired, and true. It is given to us. I do not speak on my own authority, but from the authority of Scripture. And I speak through the guidance of the Holy Spirit to increase our faith and deepen our relationship with God. And by the way, one of the reasons I thank God for what He did in my life the suffering that I went through. A little over a year ago, I thought I was going to die. I did not think I was going to make it. And I'm serious about that. But thank God he increased my faith. He gave me more perspective in life. He gave me more joy, okay? I have more peace in my life, more vision from this church, for this church than I ever have. And I believe that God is going to give us, this year we're starting back our prayer ministry And uh, we're going to be praying. I believe God's going to bring many people that need to be prayed for to be healed. Uh, I do know this. God's changed my heart. I have a whole lot more compassion than I used to. I have a whole lot more love than I used to. I have a whole lot more understanding than I used to. I I remember uh, John Maxwell saying this a number of years ago. he, He was getting older, and he said, at this point in my life, I'm not as dogmatic or sure about as many things as I used to be. And and, and I I agree with him. I am not as dogmatic or as sure as I was when I was in my 20s or 30s, because when I was in my 20s or 30s, if there was ever a person that had all the answers, it was me. You need an answer, didn't matter what it was. If I didn't know anything about it, I would tell you what to do. And I was completely confident that it was right. Now, most of the time, I was dumb as a bag of hammers on stuff, but I was very confident and dogmatic. I remember Maxwell saying this. He said, I may not be as sure about a lot of things as I used to be, but the things that I am sure of, I'm more sure than I've ever been. And I can tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, I may not be as dogmatic about a lot of things. I may not be as divisive about a lot of things as I used to. I have a lot more understanding than I used to. Hopefully, I got a lot more wisdom than I used to. But the things that I am sure of, I am more sure than I've ever been in my life. And one of the things that I know, Jesus is with us. And the promises that God gives us in Jesus are sure, and they'll be for us this year. And I believe that with all my heart. And I really, really, really do. Well, I don't speak on my own authority, as I said. Anytime someone claims to speak prophetically or under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, it must be measured by Scripture. And I believe that 2022 will be a year of promise. We're going to have a big old banner in the lobby that says promise. And we're going to trust in the promises of Jesus. Uh, Once again, I'm not suggesting that you will be promised a raise or that you will not face hardships. I do believe that the word that God has given me for 2022 is fulfilled through Jesus. He promises to provide for you. Never forget that. He promises to be with you. He promises to be with you through every difficulty. He does not promise that you will not face problems, but he promises to be with you through them. So in 2022, I want us to focus on Jesus more than ever. The more we focus on him, 
the more we increase our faith in him and the more we believe the promises that come through him, then the greater our year will be. Let's believe Jesus more than ever before in 2022. Can you say amen to that, church? I believe that with all my heart. I really, really do. And so this year we're focusing on promise, the promises of Jesus. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, Some of you have heard this before, uh, but there are a lot of new people in our church and a lot of new people that have joined us online, so I'm going to tell it for your sake uh, so that we can kind of seal this thing together. Uh, For those of you who have been here long, you know that uh, my dad was an alcoholic, and he got saved when I was a little boy. We didn't just start going to church. We went to church every time the doors were open, and uh, we got really, really committed, and God saved me when I was eight years old. I love these nine-year-olds getting baptized over here. That was awesome. I got baptized at eight years old in a lake, and, uh, I, but we began to really, really go. The church that we really got connected with was an old country church in North Carolina. Now, I got to tell you, I'm just an old redneck from North Carolina. Now, I do have an education, but the older I get, the more I'm tending to go back to the things that, that I used to do, all right? Now, I have an education. I, I got a bachelor's degree in church ministries. I got a master's degree, in, uh, master of ministries degree. I got a master of arts and uh, Christian studies degree, and I got a doctor of ministries degree. But as uh, somebody said, I graduated, um, some people graduate uh, summa cum laude, Some graduate magna cum laude, some graduate cum laude. I just graduated old laude. I mean, I'm telling you, I I was just glad to get out of that. Now, listen, my point is this. Um, This church that I grew up in still has influence in my life today. Just a bunch of old rednecks. It was actually a pretty good-sized church, uh, especially for a country church. Sometimes we were over 1,000 people every week. Uh, but on normal Sundays, about 800 people. And there was this man in our church. He was a lay pastor. Um, and his name was Troy Johnson. Troy was a Marine drill instructor in World War II. Now, before he got into the modern world, he used to plow uh, with a mule on a farm as a, as a young boy. All right. One of the things that Troy would say, this guy always had a smile on his face. It was so funny. uh, And I never really understood everything that he said or why he said it, but it was very entertaining. Uh, If something got good in the service, old Troy, and he was really loud, this old drill instructor, he would say, hold my mule while I shout. And I'm like, good night. What in the world does that mean? Well, then I found out that he used to plow the mule and I guess he couldn't let the mule go. It would, you know, go back to the barn. I don't know, but he's like, hold my mule. That, you know what that meant? It meant he was getting something out of it. It meant it was really good to him. But the favorite thing, and he used to say funny stuff all the time, but the favorite thing, Troy, when he was a young man, had to wind water from a well for his family. A, you know, a bucket and a well. You know what I'm talking about? And Troy, if the sermon got really good, or if the song got really good, or if something was really blessing him and he really believed it, old Troy would rear back and say, let your bucket down. And I guess what that meant was that he believed it and that he received it. Let your bucket down. You know what that means? that you let that bucket down, you believe that God's going to put a blessing in it, that God's going to fill it with a promise, that God's going to keep his word. And so I want us to practice it. Those of you online, you practice it at home, you say it at home, don't you dare not say it, even if somebody thinks you've lost your mind, all right? Because we're going to say it together on three. Ready? One, two, three. Let your bucket down. Y'all did good. We're going to do it one more time. You know why? Because we're going to double down on this promise for 2022 that Jesus is with us, that Jesus provides for us, that Jesus will go with us through whatever we go through. So ready on three, one, two, three, let your bucket down. And I believe with all my heart that God is going to bless us through his promises in 2022. Well, Uh, I won't be that long on the rest of the message, but I do want to read to you today from uh, the book of Joshua. 
And uh, if you don't know the story that we're going to read today, let me just kind of catch you up. 40 years earlier from when this story takes place, 40 years, Caleb was one of the 12 spies that were sent into the promised land so that the nation of Israel could get a military report, basically, so they know what they were facing. If you know the story, 10 spies didn't have faith. They gave a negative report. And two spies, Joshua, who is now leading the nation of Israel, and Caleb were the two guys that had faith. They said, let's go get it. God's delivering this into our hands. They had faith. Well, the story we're going to read today is about Caleb. And he is, at this point, 85 years old. 85 years old. Incredible. Um, he, he said, and this is the title of the message today, give me that mountain. Give me that mountain. I hope that if God lets me live to be 85 years old, that I still got some gumption in my soul. And I say, at whatever that problem is, at whatever goal God has put in my life, at 85, I'm not just looking for the highlight to, be, to go to Golden Corral during the week. I want to be able to have in my soul, give me that mountain, whatever it is. 85 years old. I love that. Well, we all love stories about people who overcome great odds and conquer their mountain. You've got mountains. You've got giants. You're going to have them this year, I promise you. But God, if he is true to his promise, and he is, he will be with you to take that mountain. I love that. We all love those stories. David and Goliath, Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr., the United States hockey team beating the Russians in the 1980 Winter Olympics. What an incredible story that was. We all love those stories, but I want you to realize that it would be easy to focus on Caleb's perseverance and his determination and his persistence and his belief in himself. Those are all good things, but that is not what this story is about. You can make that application, and I hope you do. I hope it'll be an encouragement to you, but listen, this story is not about that. It is about the faithfulness of God. It is about God is a God who keeps his promises. And our theme for this year is promise, and we're going to see how God kept his promise. Joshua chapter 15, verse number 6. And then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, that's easy for you to say, uh, said to him, you know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. Once again, he's, going, he's talking to Joshua. Moses was the leader back 40 years ago. Now it's Joshua. And he's reminding Joshua that God made a promise. 40 years. He said, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And so Moses swore on that day saying, surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance. That's the promise. God promised to deliver him. He promised to be with him. He promised to get him to that promised land. He said, and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. And he said, as he said, these 45 years, I said 40 years earlier, it's 45 years now. He said, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day, 85 years old. And yet, I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then, so is my strength now for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, I got to pause. Was he actually as strong at 85 as he was at 45? I doubt it. Maybe he was. Maybe it was true that he was just as strong at 85 as he was 40 years old. But you know what? Whether he was or not, I love the man's spirit. Because no matter what your strength is, listen to me, church, I'm getting ready to give you something good. 
No matter what your strength is at whatever point in your life, whether you're sick, whether you are not sick, whether you're healthy, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you have money, whether you have talent, it doesn't matter because it's not your strength, it's the Lord's strength that will take you through. And here an 85-year-old man said, you know what, uh, Joshua, I need you to give me that mountain. I need it because I'm just as strong, whether he was or not. Man, the man had faith. He had faith. And uh, he said, now therefore give me this mountain, of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there. These were the giants. And that the cities were great and fortified. And it may be that the Lord will be with me. And I love that. I love how that's phrased. This is the New King James Version I'm reading from. It may be that the Lord will be with me. He was not saying, hopefully, maybe, possibly, maybe God's not with me, maybe he is. There was no doubt in this. But you know what he was saying in that? No matter what the circumstances are, I'm just gonna trust him. It may be that the Lord will be with me. It may be that I'll conquer this mountain. It may be that I have to wait. It, It may be that I get healed this year. It may be that it'll come later. It may be that God will bless me financially this year. But it may be that I struggle a little while longer and then God will bless me. I I don't know what your circumstance is and I don't know what your mountain is, but I do know this. If you have faith, you'll conquer that mountain, whatever it is. And I love this. Listen, he said, and it may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Now, I, I just want to, I just want to wrap this up today. This message with three thoughts. Okay, and I won't be long. It's really three points. It's promises and obstacles and excuses. Promises, obstacles, and excuses. Promises, obstacles, and excuses. What am I saying? There are promises of God. As you face this new year, I want you to know that the promises of Jesus are with you. That the inheritance that Jesus has been given, God says, we have also. God looks at you and he does not see you in time and space. He sees you in eternity. And you are, when you have put your faith in him, just as is If you are in heaven right now in the presence of God, every promise that has been given to Jesus has been given to you. Now, God makes promises. And listen, he keeps them. He keeps them. He promises to be with you. He promises that he'll never leave you or forsake you. He promises that you, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, are now a son or a daughter of God. Some of you really struggle with your mental health or your self-esteem or lack of confidence. And, and, And some even struggle with the concept of your salvation. And I want you to understand something. You can either believe the lies of the devil or the truth of God. You got a choice. The devil says you're never enough. But Jesus is. The devil tells you you're going to fail. Uh, Jesus promises that he'll be with you. And when you follow him, whatever you do, you're going to prosper. Doesn't mean you're going to be successful this year in your business. Doesn't mean you're going to make a million dollars this year. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But what it promises is in Psalms it says, he protects our lives and does not let us be defeated. When you trust in Jesus, you'll never be defeated defeated. So just get over the lies of the devil. Now, once again, that does not mean that you're going to win the senior class president. It doesn't mean that you're going to, you know, be an influencer this year uh, on Instagram. I don't even know what that means. I just said that. All right. So you would think I was cool and young. Um, But the fact is there are promises. Jesus promises to be with you. He promises to forgive you. Some of you struggle 
with a lie from the enemy, enemy because every time you go to do something, every time you go to volunteer, he whispers into your ear about your past. If they really knew what you were like, they wouldn't even let you come to that church. If they really knew your past, if they really knew what you looked at this week, if they really knew how you talked to the people at your work this week, they would never let you do anything at that church. And he always says, you're not enough. You're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You're not smart enough. No matter what you do, you're going to fail. No matter what you do, it's going to end up in disaster. You know you, uh, you. You just start things and you don't finish them. There's no way. If you can't commit to that. You know your personality. And I don't have time to go through all the promises of God, but I do know this. He says that when you trust him, you're a son or a daughter of God. He says that you're more than a conqueror. Not just a conqueror, more than a conqueror. He he says uh, that when you trust him, he says that he will be with you. He says you are love. Some of you struggle with love because someone has abandoned you or left you or divorced you or whatever. And God says you are loved more than any human could possibly love you. You're loved. You're successful. He protects our lives and does not let us be defeated. He says you're a conqueror. He says that you're a king or a priest. He says that you are these things. Why? Not because of your goodness. Don't get it wrong. Not you. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. And when I trust the promises, just like Caleb did, then I can get that mountain. Here's the second word, obstacles. I don't mean to be discouraging, but you are going to face some obstacles this year. I like to be encouraging, and I like uh, to be positive and all this stuff, and I'm not being negative at all. I'm just stating a fact. You're going to have some obstacles. I don't know what they are. Uh, Last year, for me, it was my health. I was in a wheelchair. I thought I was going to die. And thank God, he helped me overcome those obstacles. I don't know what your obstacles are. Maybe they're financial. Maybe they're your family. Maybe it's at your job. Maybe it's you're trying to finish your education. I mean, there's a million things it could be. But here's what I know. You will face obstacles. You will face obstacles. Caleb... 45 years earlier, 45 years earlier, faced obstacles. There were giants. There were people that didn't believe. There were people that lied. You're probably going to have some people lie about you. The good news for me, if they lie about me on Facebook, I don't ever look at it, so I don't know. Um, I've got Facebook, but uh, thankfully I've got people in my life that do all the stuff for me. And so if you direct message me on Facebook or Twitter or uh, any of those platforms, don't get mad if I don't respond. It's not that I don't like you. I had no clue that you sent me anything, all right? So, uh, but you're going to face the obstacles. You're going to face them. And I promise you, that there is no obstacle too great to detour you from the plan of God for your life. Let me say that again, because some of you slept through that, and I kind of expected a response from that, because that was worth the price of admission right there. All right? I don't even know if I can say it exactly like I just said it. All right? So, uh, but there is no obstacle too great to keep you from the plan of God for your life. I don't care what it is. There is no obstacle too great that will detour you from the plan of God for your life. I know that. You know why? Because God promises that. He didn't promise me to be free of pain or struggles or problems or even obstacles. But there is no obstacle too great to keep you from God's purpose and plan for your life. And then here's the last word I want you to see. Caleb trusted the promises of God. He overcame the obstacles. Why? Because of his faith. Can you imagine how great that faith had to be for 40, 
five years. He was an 85-year-old man. He's like, I, I can still got some fight in me. Somebody hold my cane. I'm going to get up here. And he had faith. But then this last one is excuses. Now, I want to end on this. Are you going to have faith in the promises of God this year, or are you going to make excuses? You know what Caleb's excuse could have been? Could have been his age. Some of you are like, well, I'm too old to do that, or some of you are like, I'm too young to do that, or some of you are, I haven't been saved long enough to do that. Are you going to trust in the promises, or are you going to make excuses? You know, he could have made the excuse about his schedule. You know how I am? If it takes 45 years for you to do something that you said you were going to do, I'm going to move on pretty quickly. I ain't waiting 45 years, okay? Um, But Caleb, he didn't make his schedule an excuse. You know what? It was 45 years ago, yeah, but give me that mountain. Give me that mountain. Let me have that one. God, I don't want the easy way out. I want that mountain. You know what else his excuse could have been? That it was too hard. We make excuses about our schedule all the time, don't we? I don't have time for that. You know, the amazing thing is that we all have the exact amount of time, the exact same amount of time. We have 24 hours in a day. It's just what we choose to do with it. I realize there are pressures in life. I'm not downplaying that. But I'm just simply saying, don't ever use as an excuse your schedule. That's a choice. And uh, Caleb could have used that, but he didn't. He didn't say it was too hard. He didn't say it was too much. He didn't say it was too far. He didn't say, I'm too old. He didn't say, I don't have time. You know what he did? He trusted the promises of God. He saw the obstacle, and he did not make an excuse, and he said, give me that mountain. That's what I want for you. I don't know what your mountain is, but I want you to look it square in the face. I want you by faith to trust God. And you recognize that it is an obstacle, but there is no obstacle too great to keep you from the purpose and the plan of God. And I want you to look at that mountain this year and say to God, God, give me that mountain. Give me that mountain. Whatever it is, I'm going to meet it head on. I'm going to trust in the promises of God. I'm going to trust in Jesus. And yeah, there may be problems. And yeah, it may be difficult. Yes, it may be hard. Maybe it's going to take more time than I thought it was going to take. But give me that mountain. And my prayer for you is this. That as you look in faith at 2022, that by faith and through the eyes of faith, you'll look to God. And whatever it is, you'll say to him, give me that mountain. Give me that mountain. Give me that mountain. Give me that mountain. God, I've been waiting a long time. Give me that mountain. God, I know it's going to be hard. Give me that mountain. God, I know that maybe this is not according to my schedule and I'm busy. I get all that. But give me that mountain. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help all of us in faith to trust the promise of God and to say in faith, give me that mountain. Give me that mountain. Give me that mountain. Before I finish my prayer, if you would, if you don't mind, just keep your eyes closed and heads bowed for a moment. I wonder if you'd say, Pastor, I need Jesus as my Savior today. I saw these people that made their public profession today, and I want to I receive Christ. Online, if you pray to receive Jesus, fill out that card or that button at the bottom. Fill out the next step card. Click, let us know that you got saved today. If in the room you want to pray to receive Jesus, Please, 
Please listen closely. Grab this card out of the seat pocket in front of you. Put your name on it that you pray to receive Jesus. You know, we, we make this big deal out of the prayer sometimes. It's not a magical prayer. It's an act of faith. It's an act of trust. It's an act of receiving. It's an act of believing. And so when a person gets saved, you know what you're doing? You say, I'm believing in Jesus. Not just that he exists, but that he's my Savior. And so today, if you want to do that, uh, mark that on that card. Uh, today, the second question is this. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? I'm sure for many in this room, there's a mountain of discouragement, a mountain of opportunity, a mountain of a relationship, financially. I mean, there's mountains in our lives. And I wonder if you'd say today, Pastor, pray with me. I want to say like Caleb did, God, give me that mountain. If you believe God's speaking to you about something specific, would you just raise your hand so I can pray for you? Give me that mountain. That's what I need, Pastor. Give me that mountain. God bless you. Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'd give us that mountain. And we love you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today on the Avalon Church YouTube channel. We hope the message you heard today encouraged you and strengthened you in your walk with Jesus wherever you are. If you know of someone that could use today's message, be sure to share it with a friend and also hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single message. If you feel led today to give towards the mission and vision of Avalon Church, you can do so by clicking the give button on the screen. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.